Welcome to Being Humankind, with your hosts Brian, Mike, and Neely. We explore what it means to be human in a time of disconnection. When was a time that you felt most judged? When was the time I felt most judged? You would think that would come easy to me. Um, um, so I, like I said before, I, I, um, I married a woman from a wealthy family in Mexico. And the dad did not like the fact that she was marrying an American, uh, didn't like the fact that I didn't speak Spanish at the time. Um, depending on who you talk to, I speak Spanish now, but if you ask my wife, she's going to tell me no. If you ask, it, it tell you no. If you ask my aunt, her aunt, then she'll say that I do. But um, the father, my father-in-law said no uh, when, and, and so she knew I was going to come to Mexico and ask. And um, she kind of hinted to her dad that I was going to come to Mexico and ask to marry her. And her dad said, if he shows up, I'm saying no. And it, it, you know, I handled that okay. And then later on, I came to Mexico. And the first time he looked at me, it was if a look could kill, that was it. That was it. And, and the reason why we were able to get married was my mother-in-law was a saint. She, um, she pulled my father-in-law aside and she said, Martin, do you know anyone who didn't get married because their parents said no? And he was like, oh, that's a problem. And my wife, who had never stood up to her dad before, uh, told her father, uh, now I'm not asking you if I can marry Mike. I'm asking you if you're going to be at my wedding. Uh, I felt pretty judged, you know. At the same time, I kind of got it. Like, and it was, uh, it was a wake-up call. You know, I had nothing. Like, she came from, she had, you know, doctors and lawyers and politicians and, you know, big shots who... You know, it's Mexico. They were courting her, you know, showing up with mariachi bands outside her window and singing to her. And, okay. and you know, and then she was going to marry this dude, <laughs> just some dude. And uh, I had nothing. And I and, and there were there were subtle things I didn't have. Well, there were things that I didn't have that everyone told you was okay. You know, people say it doesn't matter how you dress. At some point, my wife actually told me before we got married, if you don't change the way you dress, I can't marry you. I can't marry you. And I was like, what? what, you, what how, why should it matter how I dress? And she said, exactly. Well, why should it matter to you? If it doesn't matter to you how you dress, why wouldn't you change it? I was like, ugh. But my wife's from a different social class than I am, right? My wife is from, you know, she had an uncle who, who ran for president in Mexico at some point, you know, and I was, you know, I had a mom who told me money doesn't matter at all. Don't pay attention to it. Don't make money any of your goals. You know, I mean, at some point she was homeless and another point she was in a trailer park. So maybe, maybe she, her message was not entirely the best one. Um, but yeah, I mean, not only did I feel judged, but then when I tried to see it from their perspective, I was like, oh, yeah, that might make some sense. Uh, so I, I found my father-in-law and I, mean, I, went to, I, went, I went to see, her sister got married around the same time and I went to that wedding. And um, at a point before that wedding, when I had the time to, to not be a, 
a nuisance and to have the conversation. You know, I, I basically said, um, I don't have any connection to any, um, I'm not particularly connected to with the way I do things, like with the way I was brought up. And, and I, I think for some people that would be a really hard thing to say, right? Some people are super proud of, you know, I come from an Italian American family and blah, blah, blah. I, I, there was nothing, you know, I, for, for me, I was always as interested in, in how other people were doing things as that, that was what interested me. So, and I kind of said, well, I'm, I think it makes sense to me to raise my kids more according to your family culture than mine. So why don't we just do that? And you can accept me into the family at this point. Um, I said it much nicer than that and more eloquently, but it was, it was basically like, I'll raise my family the way this family seems to raise their, their families because it seems to be doing a better job. And I can admit to that. And, and I'm, for a little while, I was the favorite son-in-law. I'm not sure if I'm the favorite now, but I'm close. I'm close at this point. Um, but yeah, he, he, I mean, he clearly wanted to, and, and we were in Mexico. There was a good chance I could have just disappeared and no one would have investigated it. Was, so, you know, <laughs> that he definitely was considering it at some point, you know. Uh, so yeah, I felt a little judged there. That, that's, that's the answer to that one. <laughs> we're glad that didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, once in a while, my wife does threaten it, though. She'll say things like, um, like, you know, you might just disappear, or you could go fix the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I say it all the time, you know, I'm, I'm the one who's, like, actually trained in combat and violent situations and, and all that, and she's the, she's the one you should be scared of, not me. So. She doesn't need to be. <laughs> no, 